my name is Michael Bassett and welcome to the program Stay Free. You know, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Of course, the idea here is to stay free. You know, we can be free uh, one day, next day we're bound again by the circumstantial world that keeps bombarding us. So the way to stay free, of course, Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way but Jesus. Jesus Christ is the way to the Father's house. And uh, to stay free, you need to have a constant recognition of God. You know, some people do not recognize that God even exists. I was thinking about that today, driving the car. I thought to myself, people think there's no God? And I thought, my God, uh, here I am driving this car and I have a thing called life. Uh, eternal life, human life. And you've got to think that there's someone that gave me life. And I thought about it, you know, I've got life today. I'm, I'm living a, a lovely life. Who gave me that life? I mean, you'd think people would think that way a little bit, wouldn't you? Where did life come from? Hold on, who gave me this heart? This heart's pumping in my body. How about my liver, my kidney, my spleen, my eyes, my hearing? Where'd they all come from? And someone will say, well, your mum and dad gave you those. Yeah, but um, where did they get it from? Well, they're mum and dad. Well, let's just keep going back, shall we? Until eventually you're going to come to uh, mum and dad, Adam and Eve. Then where do they get life from? You know, it's a ridiculous argument, isn't it? We've got to acknowledge sooner or later that there's a God who gave life and that God is a good God. There's only one creator. I'm sure you know that. There's only one that can create. Don't see yourself as a co-creator with God. That's a waste of time. There's only one who can create life. There's only one creator. All we are as human beings, of course, if you're born again and you know God, good, Jesus Christ, you're not only a human being, you're a temple that contains a God. And of course, this God is a good God. It's the God that created everything. He, in the beginning, the book of Genesis, God said, uh, let there be life, let there be light, let there be stars. He, he just went for six days creating. And at the end of every day, he said, hmm, it's good, it's good, it's good. Why did he say it's good? Because he created it from himself, and God is good. And so everything that comes from God is good. It's only man with his human thinking, that head of his, that is the talking serpent, that comes up with so-called evil thoughts, contrary to God's thoughts. God said, it is good. Man says, it's good and it's a bit evil. You know, the human mind is an evil thing. It's a mind that's contaminated from the food that the first parents ate in the Garden of Eden. They ate that food of the knowledge from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's like a virus has gone into the human mind. And so uh, that virus has to be eradicated. And the sooner we get it out of our own minds, the better off we will be. And then the better off will the person you know be. And then eventually uh, the, the, there'll be more than two, there'll be three, four, five of us that have only God good in consciousness. And then we can call it a church. Because the church really is just a group of collective consciences, a group of people that believe with the same mind. The Bible tells us to have the same mind. When we all have the same mind, and that mind contains God is good, and that's all it contains, your life, my life, and the life of the people we know will be better because of it. You know, to have good in consciousness can only result in the lines of your life being better. They will fall in the pleasant places. But if you have a mind that's filled with good and evil, you will have a negative reaction. Because the Bible says this in Isaiah 45, 7. I know this has been a hard scripture for many people, but it says this quite categorically. It says, God speaking, I form the light and I create the darkness. 
I make peace, and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. In other words, God wants to get over to us, to the human race, that there's only one power here in control. And he even said, okay, he said, I'm the one that creates evil. Me, me. Put it all down to me. In other words, eliminate another power. Put it all down to me. Well, is God evil? No, God is good. But evil can come upon the enemies of God. They would call it evil. Of course, God's friends would call it good because the enemies were destroyed. You see, one man's terrorist is another man's hero. Depends what side you're on. If you're on the side of good, though, on the side of God's side, you, you shouldn't have any worries in that area. But everything comes from God. There's only one power. There's only one creator. Well, that makes life so much easier, doesn't it? <laughs> life becomes so much simpler. You only have to focus on one power. But the human race has focused on a dual-powered run universe. And when it's dual-powered, then there's confusion, there's conflict. And so when someone believes in a dual-powered run universe, they have a belief in two powers, they're going to cause a reaction to take place. And that negative reaction would actually disrespect God, because God is good. He's all good. God is good and His mercy endureth forever. So many times it's repeated in the Bible. God wants you to know that he's a good God. Uh, well, you might say, well, you know, I know someone who's good and evil has happened unto him. Well, it's best not to judge things too quickly because the Bible also says that all things work together for the good to those that love the law that are called according to his purpose. All things. Just stay or be stayed on him long enough and you'll see things that were seemingly evil or bad be turned around for good. Maybe not right away. Maybe not straight away. But that's where patience comes in. The Bible tells you to have patience and to stand. And having done all to stand, to keep standing. Until when? Until you get the victory. Until evil is turned into good. Well, another way where we can see that God says, I create evil, is when he created the angels. You know, God created the angel beings. One of them was called, of course, Lucifer. He was called the angel of light. But when God created the angels, he created them good. God never created anything evil out of himself because he is good. You know, if you're good, you can only create good. God is spirit. So everything he created from himself is spiritual. Until man perverts it, corrupts it, and brings it forth in a different way, good and evil. That's where you get all the problems in life, all the reactions, disrespecting God's nature, turning your back on God. These type of things people are doing, and it absolutely is amazing. I'm sure that's not you. Hopefully, it's not you. But there's one thing that we can exercise ourselves in if we're going to have good life, a good life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's to get rid of the evil out of our thinking. You know, the world's books, the world's plays, the world's music, they're all about good and evil. Think about it. Watch any movie. You'll see there's always good trying to overcome evil. Or some are so bad, the evil gets better over good. But you take away that struggle between good and evil, you actually don't have any more drama. You actually have a thing called peace, peace of mind. Now, some of you have been so overwrought with life and life's problems and the reactionary lifestyle that you've been living, you're, you're ready for this message. Because once you get rid of the reaction, you enter into a thing called peace. And he's called the Prince of Peace. So I suppose what I'm trying to put over to you today is that you can come to a place where you actually eliminate the evil side of belief that God is actually fighting this other power called evil. And that they're equal in power. Or maybe God's a little bit more powerful. And you have this cosmic war going on through eternity. It's not, it's not so. 
There, like I said, there is a God of this world, but he's only to those that believe in him as the God of this world. If you're a born-again believer, I'm sure you believed in the good God. And so the whole exercise for us as Christians is to fight the good fight of faith. In fact, we don't really fight. You change from being a fighter to a lover, actually. In fact, the word fight actually is the word race. You're in a good race. And you're racing to win, to win the prize. To come to the goal of your instruction. To get to a place where you see that God is a good God. And so this eliminating process, to get rid of this belief in evil. My goodness, if some of you can catch this, it'll change your life completely. Evil is a belief. A belief in evil. It's only a belief. It's a shadow. It's not real. We create it real in our thinking. They're called imaginations. And you say, well, the Bible talks about evil and fighting evil. Actually, it doesn't really talk about fighting evil. It says, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, what you fight will fight you back. What you take will take you. Most of the evil is created by people believing in evil. And through their believing in it, they create it, whatever it is. But as far as God is concerned, there's only one power, and he is the all-good God. And he's not fighting in the sense of a big cosmic war against principalities and powers. He's telling you, fight the good fight of faith. And the power of God will pull those so-called powers down in your imagination. Paul put it this way, though we walk in the flesh, we war not after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're here, casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or good. If you say God, you're saying good. It's synonymous. Some countries they say good morning. Some countries they say God Morgan. You know, God is one. There's only one power. Now if you can eliminate the other so-called power, you won't be fighting all the time. You know, we go from glory to glory. Uh, from one level to another level, one dimension to a higher dimension, from one classroom to another classroom, because I'm sure you found out by now that this earth is just one big classroom, and, and you've got to learn the lessons, and the, the quicker you learn them, the better off you'll be, just like school. So you go from one classroom to another. Most people are in the classroom of overcoming, and they spend their life overcoming evil. They go from one level of overcoming to another level of overcoming. Well, it's about time you graduated. I want to help you graduate today and get to the classroom that you need to be in. And that classroom is God's finishing school. And when you're in that classroom, you'll say it is finished. It is done. And then you have that two-edged sword of the Spirit or the Word of God. Because Jesus said, my words are spirit and their life. And you wield that sword. The tongue out of your mouth will speak categorically it is done, it is finished. Just like Jesus said on the cross. He said, it is finished. Now you're in God's finishing school. So when the so-called problems and the so-called other powers and the reactions are taking place, you're not duped anymore. You're not duped by the appearances of a thing. Judge not by appearances, the Bible would tell us. He said, don't judge those judgments. They're evil judgments. But judge according to the word of God. Judge righteous judgments. Jesus said it's finished. Finished means finished. It's done. Wield that two-edged sword. And then you stop fighting. See, once you have a peaceful mind, then you will know that there's a prince called peace whom you serve. If you have a warring mentality or a warring mind, you'll have a duality. You'll have peace on the one hand and violence on the other. And then you feel that it's your job to overcome these powers. It's like the world today. They think their job is to help God with the environment. And everyone's talking about saving the environment. Listen, best save your own mind. Save your own soul. And once you've got salvation 
in your heart, soul, mind, then you can say, God's a good God, and this earth's all right, don't worry about it. Then you stop having that anxiety to try to be another atlas to hold up the earth for God. You know, men are fighting battles they don't need to fight. You know, when you talk about the battles in the Old Covenant even, you see God saying to Israel over and over again, He said, you don't need to fight this battle. Just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Isn't that nice? You don't need to fight that. You know, when you start to fight something, you, you then have created an enemy. You see, and what you hate, you fear. And you'll fight it. But when you start to bring everything into perspective of the good, and suddenly your soul mind only has God in consciousness, and you're worshipping God, good, then you're fighting the good fight of faith. And that fight's an easy fight. In fact, that fight says it's done already. You've won. You're not even winning. You've won. You're in the finishing school of God. It's, it's done. Now I stand and I see the salvation in the law. And when a so-called evil situation turns up called circumstance in my life, I've learned to see through the appearance, through my spiritual senses, my spiritual uh, defenses and my spiritual uh, advancement of the word of God going forth out of my mouth, I begin to see that these circumstances eventually fall away. And then the good comes into manifestation. See, it's a, it's a belief system that's, uh, that's taken hold of us. It's come down from Adam. You know, he ate from that tree. He shouldn't have eaten of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he did. Okay, but God's going to rectify it. And he is rectifying it. And that's why Jesus said you must be born again. There's a way out of this dilemma, this living a life of a reactionary. That disrespecting God by saying there's another power equal to God. And then we become a, you know, the mass crusader, the cape crusader to fight evil, to save the world. The world doesn't need saving, it needs your mind to be saved. When your mind is saved, then you can save somebody else's. Then eventually we'll have a lot of people that are believing in a good God, a one power run universe. Then we're going to start seeing some results. And until that time, men is going to fight evil and go on crusades and find more enemies that need to be overcome. But God is not, uh, not, not saying that in the Word of God. I, I cannot find that in the Word of God. He said, fight the good fight of faith. He said, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, I said, good report, think on those things. Think about it. Once you have good in consciousness, or God in consciousness, you have a God consciousness. And then good things start to turn up in your life. But if you have this consciousness of a good and evil world and you are chosen the good side and you're going to fight evil, it goes on forever. Well, it's been going on for six, seven thousand years, isn't it? It's about time we left this old world and moved into the new world, a new consciousness, a new dimension, a world of spirit where we see God's spirit He's not a spirit, he is spirit. God is good. And he's got a son called Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, uh, Jesus is good. But Jesus would say, don't call me good. The Father in me, he is good. Now, he's always pointing back to the good of God. And that's what you and I have to learn to do. Keep the recognition going. Pointing back to the fact that God in me is good. Even though it looks like it's not, it is, because I know better. And so he created an angel, and the angel, he himself decided to change from Lucifer, light, to the devil, Satan. Well, that was his choice. God didn't make him that way. But he created him. Sure, he created him. So let's try to see if we can meditate and contemplate on just one power, Try it for a day. You'll see that your life will be better just for that one day. Uh, don't be always looking for devils everywhere. You know, the belief in evil, the belief in devils. 
You know, once you have a mind that has a two-powered battle going on, you're always very fatalistic. You live by chance and fate. You don't want to live that way. You live by faith. The just should live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in God. Faith in good. God is good. Boy, this is a wonderful, wonderful day for you if you're hearing, if your eyes are, are being opened and your ears are being opened by God, by spirit. This is a wonderful day for you. It's called a good day. And then suddenly you'll see good everywhere. And good will take you. Because you're not disrespecting God. Remember the word dis in front of everything good changes it into, into, into evil. Ease is wonderful. Put dis in front of it. What do you get? Disease. Well, this is the actual name of a god. You know, the word evil is also a name of a god. It's called Ra. And the Ra god is whom the Egyptians worshipped. It's also another name, uh, uh, Pluto. The Roman name for Ra is Pluto. Another Hebrew, I think it's a Greek word, is, is, is Hades. It's the same word, you see. So you don't want to serve Hades, you don't want to serve Ra, you don't want to serve Dis. In fact, you don't want to serve Pluto either. <laughs> that's the planet apparently that's furthest away from the sun. You, know, you start serving these type of gods, you'll be really out there where there is no light. It's called ignorance and darkness. But once you start to recognize God, give God some glory, give him some respect. God is the one that gave you life. He, he is closer to you than the breath that's in your nostrils right now. You can't see him, of course. He's invisible. But you know he's there. Deep down, you know he's there. Even if you call yourself an atheist or an agnostic, if you're listening to the show, you know there's a God. And he knows you. And he's just waiting for you to recognize him, to give him respect. Don't disrespect him by saying, oh, I don't believe in a God. Well, that's, that's nonsense. That's silly. You, 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 just by saying, I don't believe in a God, you're a believer. You believed in nothing. Well, wouldn't it be better to believe in something? Something good? Then something good can happen to you right now. Where do you get these lungs from? Where do you get these eyes from? Where do you get this body from? Your parents? Or where'd they get it from? Their parents? And where'd they get it from? You've got to go back eventually to the Garden of Eden, to Adam and Eve. And where did they get it from? They got it from God. There's only, like I said in the beginning, one power, one creator, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope of your calling. God is one. When you get into that power of one, that's the most powerful place you can be or I could be in life. Because now we're just holding this power in consciousness, this good in consciousness. We don't have to deal with all these other things. They will take care of themselves. Believe me, they will take care of themselves. Every negative situation, the minute you stop thinking about it being a negative or a power, you take away the life of that problem. You take it away. You devitalize it. Because all you can think about now is God is good. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. And so you're no longer looking at this other power that you've got to fight, you've got to overcome. You just ignore it. Best thing you can do to any enemy of yours is ignore them. You want to just deflate somebody, ignore them. Ignore that they even exist. You see how quick they deflate. In fact, I would go as far as to say that you who believe in a two-power run universe you are giving your power to an entity that you are creating and you're calling it the devil. You're creating your gods. Then you serve them. And then you go around proving to everybody, see, I told you there's a devil and he's evil. Because you keep recognizing it. It's a belief system. Is there a devil? Yes, there's a devil. It's a fallen angel, that's all. And we, the born-agains, the Bible says we'll be judging angels. <laughs> you don't have to fear evil, folks, when, you feel, when your heart is filled with good and love. And when God has come to live in your heart, you won't be looking around no more for evil or, or spooks or bogeymen. You, know. you must be born again. I must be born. Well, thank God I am. I received the Lord a long time ago, and I, and I keep the recognition going that I'm born again. 
And I thank God that I can renew this mind. Because Paul the Apostle said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Remember, the old mind is a carnal mind. The old mind is always thinking thoughts. The evil thoughts. The heart of man is evil. This, this mind is evil. It disrespects God, disregards God, and then it creates themselves a God. You don't want to do that. I'm sure you're not. I know that when I speak to the camera, when I speak to you, I know I'm dealing with different types of people here. Saved, not saved. Believers, unbelievers. Agnostics, atheists. Well, choose you this day, whom will you serve? You're going to serve good or you're going to serve good and evil? If you serve good and evil, you will have a reaction in your life and it won't be a good one. You become allergic to lots of things. You eliminate the other power, so-called, your life goes better. Now, like I said, there is evil out there. There's evil men with their evil thoughts, and they're creating evil and mayhem and war all over the planet. But it doesn't have to come to you where you live. It doesn't have to come to you. The Bible says, no evil will come nigh my dwelling. Why? Because I'm in that strong tower of faith in God. The nature of God is a strong tower. The name of God is a strong tower, the Bible says. The righteous runner into it and is safe. Well, you better get there quickly because the towers of this world are falling, as you know. But you're serving a good God. Well, God bless you or good bless you. <laughs> That's the same word. And I've got to go. But I trust that the Spirit of God will bring to your remembrance of who He is. God is good. Remember that. Now come to my website, find out a bit more about stayfree.tv, www.stayfree.tv. See you again soon. God bless you.